Hey, this is Brent with Lackens Motorsports, and I wanted us to uh, take a look this week at one of the uh, the meanest 445s that I've ever built. 445 FEs. Um, just a real, both a screamer and a sweetheart at the same time. I've done some aftermarket block uh, engines that were around, you know, the 448, 449 cubic inch range for um, some road race applications and that sort of thing but I've never done one with the factory block and uh, you know stroke or crank combination so uh, grab a cup of coffee and uh, sit back and we're gonna discuss this build as we uh, get going here so this build was for a customer of mine um, He's in one of the Dakotas, North Dakota or South Dakota. I've got customers in in both, and uh, I deal with some companies in South Dakota, so exactly uh, which one is escaping my memory right now. But uh, this was going, uh, this engine was being built for his son's uh, Mustang, early Mustang. Wanted something to replace the 390 that was in it. Um, he had a, a concise list of um, requirements for the engine so he wanted a peak horsepower rpm of about 6,000 rpm uh, we needed a dual plane intake so make it easy to clear under the hood and he wanted it to uh, make a lot of horsepower and he needed it to have a specific amount of vacuum to run power brakes so I really like those kinds of challenges where you're trying to get the most out of a particular combination. Um, so for this build, we, we decided to use a um, uh, just a, a standard 445 combination along with some ported trick flow heads, a ported performer RPM intake, and um, a solid roller camshaft to get where we needed to go. Um, and it turned out beautifully. So let's, uh, let's step into uh, the block and the rotating assembly requirements. So we started with just with a factory 390 block and uh, did all of our typical um, machining processes to it. Board honed with torque place. That, uh, this one came out with a 4090 bore size. Um, the mains were line honed, the decks were squared up. Um, just a really solid uh, combination for a street motor. We didn't feel that we needed to go to an aftermarket block. Um, the block got some special treatment since we were trying to get a specific horsepower out of it. As you can see there, we used some uh, some lifter valley vents to keep the oil from ro uh, falling down on the rotating assembly. Uh, so the holes in the lifter valley were, were tapped and we used some half inch pipe nipples and screwed in there. Uh, rotating assembly consisted of some, some Molle pistons and um, you can see they're uh, set up for a 409 bore, very light, under 500 grams, um, inboard pin boss coated. Uh, just a really nice product, I really like the Molle pistons. Uh, Molinar rods. If you haven't um, tried a set of Molinar rods yet, I would highly suggest it. Very strong, very lightweight. These are uh, six, seven hundreds um, to go with the Molle pistons. And of course, we use coated main and rod bearings in in everything. So there's another shot of the uh, assembled short, short block Cloy's billet, uh, billet steel timing set. Got some BAM lifters in there. And we decided to go with a solid roller uh, just for from the standpoint that the car will not be driven very much at all. And um, you can see the block there. It's a D4TE block, later model block. But uh, not many miles to be put on it, so we weren't really afraid of... Uh, you know the longevity of the lifters. The solid roller helped us to um, make the horsepower 
but it also uh, with the uh, advertised durations it was small enough to um, to keep the overlap down so this cam only had uh, if I remember correctly 61 degrees of overlap uh, on a 109 uh, and a half lobe separation angle so sounded good uh, made uh, if I remember correctly for the cylinder heads, we went to um, my favorite, the Trick Flow cylinder head. Since this head has come out, um, it has really changed uh, performance for the FE engine family, in, in my opinion. Uh, also, in my opinion, this is the best uh, off-the-shelf cylinder head that you can that you can buy, and it would even rival a lot of the Proport Edelbrock offerings out there that uh, that I've seen. But uh, 2190, 1625 uh, valve package. Bought these heads bare uh, with valves and then had them uh, sent to uh, Mr. Joe Crane for porting. And um, we were able to get about 360 CFM out of these heads, which is really the key to making the horsepower at the low RPM. Um, you'll see here in a minute that the peak horsepower RPM was at that 6,000 uh, RPM number and this is this is the reason the heads just perform really really well so standard uh, trick flow valve package and then we filled uh, filled the heads with uh, some good quality valve springs and, and titanium retainers to lighten everything up so if I remember correctly we were um, around 620 630 pounds of open spring pressure uh, like I said uh, the, the lobes are, are fairly aggressive for for this RPM so wanted to ensure that we had plenty of valve spring load for for the application here's a, a view of the assembled heads and uh, we drill, or we don't drill, we tap the feed holes in the top for uh, a plug so that uh, you only oil through the push rods. This is kind of my standard operating procedure for an FE. Very rarely do I oil through, uh, through the heads, through the rockers anymore. I was able to work with uh, Mr. Doug Garifo of Precision Oil Pumps, and we were um, we through his contacts with ARP, we were able to come up with uh, a longer stand stud for the rocker arms to take advantage of uh, the deeper threads on the trick flow heads. So a little bit extra grip for those uh, for those studs, and like I said, with the uh, with that open spring pressure that I was running, we didn't have any issues with, um, you know, any weakness in in that area. I have pulled the stand studs out of aluminum heads before, and it's not uh, it's not a fun thing to go through. But I feel pretty confident about this particular setup. The trick flow heads, the stand pads are raised, and uh, you get a lot of extra meat there. So hit Mr. Doug up if you want some uh, trick flow rocker stud kits he'll be happy to, to help you out there so we went with the performer RPM intake and uh, to keep the uh, hood clearance up and uh, also give us a little bit more better manners down low uh, intake was also ported by Joe and uh, did some divider plenum divider work there but uh, this is a really potent combination guys and if you'll see you'll wait around and see the amount of horsepower that this engine made at just 6,000 RPM uh, with 10.3 to 1 compression and um, you know just a really mild easy going combination and and these were all key components to to that combination here's some assembly shots so short blocks together timing covers on a uh, new oil filter adapter and uh, you can get a better shot of the uh, the Lifter Valley uh, stands there, stove pipes. There's there's a lot of na different names for those, but uh, 
as you can see the holes are quite big in those so it allows the engine uh, the engine's crank case to vent but they are tall enough and and I put some taller ones in the back just when acceleration pushes the oil to the to the back of the lifter valley but they're tall enough to keep the oil from raining down on the rotating assembly it's not um, you know it's not a 20 30 horsepower modification but it is a I think a lower single digit modification four or five horsepower something like that uh, every little bit counts on on specific applications so we were happy to to get that done there Fell Pro 1020 head gaskets a good all-around head gasket uh, without getting into the expense of, of a comedic or something like that. And there's the passenger side again. Uh, the, you see the D4TE block and uh, all of the lifter galleries have been uh, tapped for a quarter inch pipe plug. That's standard operating procedure for us. And there's one more shot overhead of the long block with the solid roller lifters. Uh, Mr. Gasket 202As going on. That's my standard intake gasket that I like to use. I prefer the paper style gaskets. A little bit of silicone on, on both sides of those puppies. Glue them down to the heads and a little bit when uh, when you pull the in, or put the intake manifold on. And with the vast majority of my engines, I always dyno at Dale Mears Racing Engines down in Buffalo, Kentucky. You see a uh, nice carburetor there built by Scott Perkins. He does all my custom carburetor work for me. Um, I should have put up some pictures of the carburetor. Just a really nice uh, contoured and blended throttle body. And uh, the Venturi side, just really, really nice uh, blend work at the top. Another shot of it on the dyno. Uh, one inch super sucker to help out with things. Powered by Ford chrome valve covers, MSD plug wires, MSD distributor with a black cap, always a black cap. And um, let's listen to it make a pull. Very mean sounding FE for just 6,000 RPM and accelerated really well and makes excellent horsepower. As you can see right there, 617 horsepower at only 6,000 RPM with a dual plane intake with only 10 and a quarter to 1 compression ratio. So a testament to good induction parts and a good camshaft and um, lots of torque uh, 584 pound-feet of torque it looks like so we'll walk through um, the left hand side start of the pull around 3600 rpm 3536 36. oil temperature uh, basically gained a degree and that's what we will look for uh, we're pulling the water temperature off of the cooling tower, not off the engine. Oil pressure went up uh, throughout the pull. 
ended up with uh, around 73, 74 PSI there. Air fuel ratios were pretty much dead on left and right, and that's the uh, that's the testament to well balanced intake runners. So, uh, Mr. Joe always used to port uh, uh, the uh, balance the runners for me on dual plane intake, and then we're back to where we started. Uh, engine sitting in the bottom of a crate, almost ready to be delivered, and. Um, it's always good when when they leave <laughs> so um, hope you guys have enjoyed this um, I've been wanting to do a video on this build for for a little bit and uh, I've got many more of these uh, type of videos where we go over the entire build in one video so uh, look forward to many many more of those hope you guys are having a good week and uh, uh, encourage you to get out and and work on your own stuff and and gain some data and gain some information do some testing and uh, get your hands dirty so hope you have a good weekend hit that like button hit that subscribe button and i'll see you soon